There's a lot of good to talk about in the 1980s. But what about the bad? Cult is replete with the it's so bad it's good. For this franchise, it started so well and ended with it's so bad it's good. From Oscar to Razzie, Jaws the Revenge. It's Christmas on Amity Island, but the dark shadow has returned and claimed a Brody. So the remaining family are off to the Bahamas, and for some reason, the big bitch follows. <laughs> I admit I enjoy it against my better judgment. It can be used in film school on how not to make a monster movie. The original movie works so well because we didn't see much of the shark. It preyed on our psyche, for the lack of a better term. Lorraine Gary is back as the ever-suffering Ellen Brody. As Mike, we have the star of The Last Starfighter, Lance Guest. Horror fans will remember him as Jimmy in the original Halloween 2. As his wife, Karen Young. The daughter, the late Judith Barsi. On the island, you have cult star Mario Van Peebles and the legend Michael Caine. Critics tore this movie a new asshole. Rotten Tomatoes presently has it at 3%. IMDB, 3 out of 10. I've been reading the reviews on IMDB and I had to look for something positive and I found this doozy. Best Jaws ever. Michael Cannon is brilliant as was the shark and the Jamaican bloke. There isn't anything I can say about that. It speaks for itself. <laughs> The Razzies and Oscars story. I already knew Michael Caine had won his Oscar while doing the reshoots. Lou Gossett Jr. had won his Oscar before making Jaws 3. Both receiving Razzie nominations for their performances. Best Supporting Actors in one year, Worst Supporting in others. And they both carried on having great careers. Michael Caine had said on an Australian talk show that he had never seen it, but with the money had bought a house for his mum. Was it wise to shoot in Super 35? Look at this comparison shot. Michael! Wiki says the makers used hydraulics instead of pneumatics. You can see the arm pulling the big dick. What made the originals work is how they shot the shark and how it was edited. But here... Shark still looks fake. For a movie made for 13 million. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Whatever you're feeling on this. I don't think it should have gone further than the second movie, but the amount of copycat movies, Piranha, Alligator, The Swarm, Orca, 
You could just say there's a new Jules coming and people would come in their droves. Don't believe me? Jaws of Revenge made 51.9 million. More than double its estimated budget. I'll bring up Jaws 3. 20.5 million estimated budget. And roughly 88 million at the box office. Bad or not, asses in seats. <laughs> sequel had a mountain to climb. Of course, none could compare to the original. The second is a classic. The third is best seen in 3D. And this one is so far-fetched. You look at the poster of the original, maybe too intense for younger viewers. The fourth may not be taken as seriously by the same. Dear Judith, Taken away so young. She died with her mother on July 25th, 1988. At the hands of her abusive father. She had appeared in some of the 80s biggest shows. Her biggest hit was The Land Before Time. Released after her passing. <laughs> Don't step on a crack or you'll fall and break your back. I said this in my Elm Street vid when talking about sequels and franchise pieces. A genuine sequel would mean you tried to put out something worthwhile. You go for broke and put a period point on the end. A franchise piece is an attempt to make money off the name and or character with no definitive finish. Remember this. You don't think that if a shark was destroyed, that another shark could could come in? Sharks don't take things personally, Mr. Brody. And there you have it. What does the future hold? While there have been a few decent shark movies, I read an article that was linked to the IMDb that there will never be a Jaws reboot, so long as Steven Spielberg is alive. So let's hope he lives for another 50 years. Yes, she is. That's her right there. Is that what I think it is? Huh? Hold on. 